Welcome everyone. It is always an honor to worship together. In these cold days, let's stay close together with with precaution so we can don't we so we don't feel that cold weather around us. But also let's enjoy it because it's the day that the Lord made for for worship. Let's start with a prayer. Dear God, Thank you for this day. Thank you for the weather. Thank you for taking care of our nature. Taking, thank you for taking care of us. We trust that you got everything under control. And please open our hearts and minds so, so we can understand what you are telling us through this message. Let your spirit guide us and lead us to the message that you want us to unwrap today. In your name we pray. Amen. The Gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 23, beginning with the 33rd verse. When they came to the place called the Skull, 
They crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of our Lord. This Gospel reading cries on the cross. If we, if we do a, a quick check, we will, we will remember when Jesus was born until this moment. Pretty much all of us know a little bit of that of that path. And we know that Jesus on that cross was not fair. It was not fair for him. But Jesus saw it different. Christ on the cross is only about, about divine love. A love that we do not usually understand. This love concept is way different from our concept. Usually, we love and want to be loved back. Sometimes, we condition our love. If there's any change involved before, we can love. Sometimes, we condition a person, a church, an ideal, or something that we want to love, but is not in our conditions. We will love them if they adapt to our conditions, or at least be in the middle. However, this divine love does not condition anything from, from us. It's just there for us. From Genesis until today, God loves us so much so we can be transformed by this divine love. It does not involve a change from us and this love is not a reward from our good actions. Our good actions, it's a result from this love. Some of us, we, we cannot handle that. We need to feel that we earn it or we deserve what we are getting. We need to remember that everything is by grace. We see Jesus at the cross suffering and and being there for something un, for un, for some injustice but even he said forgive them father they don't know what they are doing how big is this love that even through that suffering that he was experiencing he asked the father to forgive us this divine love was bigger than the pain. This divine love was bigger than the injustice. Jesus had the big picture in mind to save all of us. He was not listening to anyone who was making fun of him. Some people were laughing. Some others were just mocking him and challenging him to save himself. If you are the king, save yourself. Some others were sad, but quiet. And then there were two criminals, on his, one on his right and one on his left. And one of the criminals uh, 
challenge Christ to save him and to save himself. And the other one, the other one was different. He knew who Jesus was. He told the other criminal, don't you fear God? We are here because of the consequences of our actions. But him has that has did nothing wrong to to deserve to be here. He knew Jesus because after that he addressed Jesus by name. Recognizing his need for God's mercy, he asked Jesus to remember him when he is in paradise. He knew that Jesus was truly or is truly the Son of God. This person asked for mercy and forgiveness. And the best thing is even in that suffering, even in that moment, Jesus granted him what he was asking for. That was the purpose of being there. I cannot imagine how much pain and suffering Jesus experienced that day. But Jesus loves us so much that for him, it was worth it. Jesus was there to die for us, but also to rise and conquer so we can live the resurrection every day. During our life, we have seen and we will continue to see so many times that people we will, will be living painful moments. We have experienced painful moments, and sadly, we will keep experiencing painful moments. Sometimes we feel like there's no point or we are uh, hopeless. But just remind, remember what Jesus did here for us. Can just remind us about the big picture divine love how can we help others how can we show what the sacrifice of Christ on the cross mean for us and and for the world I remember when I was in elementary there was a classmate who did not have resources to bring lunch and I start praying that uh, to God so he can provide resources to his family so he can bring lunch I told my grandma so she can be praying with me for this uh, matter also. After some time, I said, well, God, you're taking too long. So I asked my mom to make a double lunch so this classmate can eat. And when I shared this with him, he was so happy that I was really happy with him. I was sharing his joyful, his joy. So after school, I ran to my grandma's house and I told her what happened. And she said, see, God answered your prayer. Sometimes he will take action from your end to answer that prayer. And in that moment, it hit me. It hit me. I was praying, praying, praying. And looking to this classmate not having lunch while I was praying and eating. I was a shabby guy. But after a while, I realized two things. Why I never share my own lunch. We were not wealthy, but there was food every day at home. So nothing happened to me if I share that lunch. My concept of praying was not the best one. And second, why it took me so long to realize that God want, wanted to use me to share his love. My decision for waiting for that answer affect the person who I was trying to help. Let's meditate on God's word, but also let's put some actions to our words. 
Some of our neighbors have experience, have bad experience at church. Some others, they are not interested to attend the church. Others have different beliefs. But no matter what, we can share God's love. Some other people have fear of, of being in community. We can just show them that we care. We can just show them what we have experienced about this divine love. Let's continue using our skills and resources to show them the beautiful experience of this divine love that we can experience every day. We are so blessed for that. Before going to my first in-person week at, uh, to seminary last October, one person asked me for a favor. He asked me, Salvador, this week, go to seminary thinking that being a Lutheran is more than liturgy. It's a way of life. And I did. I meditate the whole week on this. Every class. Even, even everything was wonderful. My whole experience was wonderful there. But on any opportunity... I was meditating on this. That week I have the blessing of experience a multicultural worship service. This service was in different languages. Swahili, French, English, and Spanish. It was beautiful. In that little space compared to the world, we worship God in our own primary languages. And the Spirit of God was there. Everyone was joyful. Everyone was sharing God's love. It didn't require something from us to be different. Just to be us and be open to experience this divine love. That's one of the things that I see about living a Lutheran life. Reading about Jesus on the cross and this criminal that repent and ask for mercy and forgiveness make me realize that the kingdom of God is a kingdom where the king will leave the 99 to get that one that is lost. The hundred, all the hundred that are under the king uh, kingdom were made to live in community. That is why the one that was lost was in danger just by being alone. It's also us. The sacrifice of Jesus to save me and to save all of us is if, if we are transformed by this divine love, we need to live in community and share this love. Is this the Lutheran way of life? Advocating for that one that is lost? Loving our neighbor and our enemies? Caring for the whole creation? Putting the kingdom of God first than our goals? If you can put on the comments, what is living the Lutheran way of life for you? I will really appreciate it. So far, I have learned about living a Lutheran way of life is... Turning every day to the Lord for mercy and then spread the good news. Loving our neighbor. The best way to love Christ is loving our neighbor. Every person should be Christ for us. Advocating for justice. The kingdom of God's justice. Not this earth concept of justice. Caring for creation. A creation that God made to have a constant presence on it. Generosity. One of the biggest things that I have experienced in my Lutheran path. The just generosity of love, resources, and kindness from everyone. Sometimes we can feel that we are doing so much and at the same time it looks so small. But remember the parable of Master Seed. What we are doing can look small, but it does not matter the size of the seed 
because God will water it. We have been blessed with love, skills, and resources because God took care of us. So keep being generous and God will take care of it. Love your neighbor. Invest on, 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 on your church. Time, resources, and skills. You can invest what, what, whatever you can. And it will make the difference because God will water it. Living a Lutheran way of life is being Christ-like. And no matter how long we have been walking this path, we have not have figured it out. So let's turn our minds into the kingdom of God every day, every night, and let's spread the good news to everyone. Before we go, look to your right, look to your left, or go with your neighbor and just say, I love you in the way that you can. Let's share this divine love that we receive by grace. And God's people say, Amen. You're
I hope you enjoy this time as much as I did. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your comments. I will read all of them about the Lutheran way of life. And before we go, let's pray um, how, the, how Jesus taught us. You can, you can say the Lord's Prayer in, your, in the language of your preference. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer de tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. I hope you have a blessed week. I hope you share this divine love with everyone. And may God's spirit lead, lead you to do everything. And may God's love makes you shine to everyone. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Love creation. Blessings. Amen.